Hi everyone, my name is Nathan. I work here at Swamp Air as an engineer. Uh, I'll be taking a look at permissions and how we start to collaborate within Swagger Hub. So when we first open up the tool, we're given a display of all of the APIs that I concurrently work on. Um, this is going to be across all of the organizations and teams that I'm a part of. And we can see those broken down on the left hand side. When I open up the tab, we can start to get a better view of this as well. So actually open up any of these organizations, see just the APIs that are assigned to that. And then we can break this down further into the individual projects that are assigned to this organization. We'll get into this a little bit more later, um, but this is essentially how we can start to view that. When we start thinking about the users that are part of this organization, this is handled through the highest level of settings right up here in the top. Two ways that we can start to look at this. We can go through an individual user view. Uh, this is going to be where we invite members. We can sign permissions here. We essentially have two roles within Swagger Hub, one of the member and one of the owner. Members have essentially a read-only uh, permission set. Owners are going to be able to edit, upgrade kind of uh, integrations, publish and unpublish version. Uh, so that's really the full, full kind of uh, permissions that we have on offer there. When we look back at the organizations, we have another way of assigning these roles, and that's through this, this team setting. When we open this up here, we can see that we have these different teams that we've broken down. Now, when we think about this, these should have different permission sets. So architects are most likely going to be a group of owners. Uh, consumers will most likely be a set of members, people who just want to con consume the documentation. Uh, but each of these we can open up. We can start to add individuals, and then when we take a look later at the project level, we can actually assign permissions to the entire team from that point as well. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of different ways that we can start to structure the, the, the members of these different organizations. When we actually start to dig into the definition itself, I'll just go ahead and open one of these up. We have a really interesting way of communicating within the tool. So as opposed to sending Slack messages, emails, just copy pasting parts and, and sharing it that way, uh, we can actually do that within the tool using our comment system. Any of the rows on the left hand side, we're going to be able to mouse over, select, and initiate a conversation. It's here that I'm going to be able to say, you know, this needs work or whatever needs, needs to happen. And as soon as I comment, an email is going to get sent out to the rest of my team. Everyone's going to be able to see if I tag a specific user, they're going to get the idea that, you know, they need to jump in here and start to do this work. And we'll be able to have a back and forth at this point. We can go, you know, communicate through the tool, a record of this is kept, and then as soon as we resolve these issues, we can go ahead and click the button up at the top and it's tucked away. So a great way to maintain and, and keep track of what's being worked on here, of, of maintaining the conversation that's happening around this, but this is also a great way to start to catch errors. So if we have something like a required parameter that's defined and we don't have it included in the definition, We'll get a big red error up at the top. We can actually assign somebody to it using the, uh, the comment system here. And very, very explicit in what they need to work on and how they need to get this up and running. The final component that we'll talk about is how we group together like APIs. So one important concept of what we do in Swagger Hub is having APIs as well as domains. And domains we like to think of as shared resources that are accessed across a number of different API definitions. Typically, we want to take all of those API definitions and we want to take the domains and make sure that they're in kind of an assigned space that we're going to be able to maintain. And that's what we do with a project. So we can create new ones right up at the top, assign them to different organizations here, and then we can start to push in these different uh, API calls or definitions with these different domains. And we also have a separate permission set here. So we can see that we can invite teams, individuals, assign permissions here. So a lot of flexibility within that organization structure. So just a quick look there today at the different ways that we can start to collaborate on the tool, uh, just looking at how we organize um, groups of users through our organization and project system, through our team structures, how we assign permissions, as well as how we start to communicate within the platform using the commenting tool. How we collaborate is an important part of what we do with Swagger Hub. More than 50,000 organizations use Swagger Hub to improve their API workflow and work better together. Find out how Swagger Hub can help your team collaborate on and coordinate your API development. Visit swaggerhub.com and start collaborating today.